That's a little deeper than that, wasn't it, guys? A little deeper. What you want me to know. And Jesus, show me what you want me to do. And Jesus, show me what you want me to stop doing. I will be a doer of your word. Not just a hear. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Everybody hear me? <clears throat> All right, guys. All right. So, what a what a beautiful little chilly, frightly little cold morning, right? Yeah, but it's gonna warm. It's gonna be a beautiful day today. Amen. I was sitting there while I got. I didn't say a joke in my first sermon, but I was sitting there while I go, and I thought, hmm, Lord, I'll, I'll tell this one. I hadn't told this in a while, so let's break the ice in. These kids were lining up in a school line to go get their lunch. And at the end of the uh, school line there, there was a big old round little uh, uh, bowl, and it had some apples in it. And on, there was a sign on it that said, only take one, God is watching, right? And so kids were going by, and they happened to look, and there was another little bowl over there on the side had all chocolate chip cookies, and there was a sign on it that said, take as many as you want, God is watching the apples. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> uh, guys, uh, I'm going to speak to you today about a lot of things that may be going on in your life. I'm going to speak to you about how to help you overcome some of these things. The lesson today is I'm still standing, okay? We go through, we all go through difficulties and things we don't understand. It's easy to get discouraged and think, why am I having all these problems? But being a person of faith doesn't exempt us from all these difficulties. In Matthew 5.45, it says, she is Randy, Matthew 5.45, please. <laughs> We're going to get this started, guys. That's all right. That's all right. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven, for he gives sunlight to both evil and the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike, right? The scripture says the rain falls on the just and the unjust. No matter how good of a person you are, no matter how much you honor God, you're going to have some rain. And a man told me the other day, he said, Chris, man, he said, I'm having more problems than the man down the street, and he's not even following God. Okay? And Jesus told a parable about this, where a wise man built his house on the rock. He honored God. Another man built his house on the sand. He didn't. The winds blew, the rains descended, and beat upon the houses. What's interesting is, is the same storm came to both people, the just and the unjust. Say it doesn't, sorry, and the unjust. If, they stay, if the story ended right there, there you, there, there you would say it doesn't make a difference to honor God. Same thing that happens to me happens to everyone else. Built my house on the rock, yet I'm in this storm. Got a bad medical report. My child got off course. Lost my biggest client. That family member done me wrong. No. That's not the end of the story. If you judge it too soon, it may seem like it doesn't make a difference. Jesus went on to tell when the man that built his house on the rock after the storm came and it was all over, the house was still standing. The guy that had his house built upon the sand, his house had washed away. Here's the difference. When you honor God, the storms may come, but you have a promise that others don't have. When it's all said and done, you will still be standing in difficult times. You have to remind yourself, this is not the end. My house is built on the rock. And the enemy doesn't have the final say. God has the final say. And he said, when it's all over, I will still be standing. 
You may get knocked down, but you won't get knocked out. You may suffer a setback. You may have to go through some things, but don't get discouraged. Don't get bitter. It's just life. It rains on all of us. The promise God gives us is if you will stay in faith when the smoke clears and the dust settles, you will not be the victim. You will be the victor. Amen? Yes. And you will still be standing. All of us in here, guys, all of us can look back on things that should have defeated us. That divorce, that bad break, that trouble at home or at work should have given you a nervous breakdown, but look at your but look, you're still standing. Happy, whole, restored. That addiction, that party and lifestyle you used to do should have killed you, but because of a praying mother, you're still standing. Yeah. Clean, sober. Free. That sickness should have been the end. The medical report said you were done, but God said, I got another report. It's not over. You're still standing. Or maybe you lost a loved one thinking you can't go on, thought you had seen your best days, but God breathed new life into you and lifted you out of the pit. He put a new song in your heart. Here you are today still standing. When you go through some things, you see the goodness of God. You see Him lift you, restore you, promote you, heal you. When you, are, when you have the history with God, remembering what He has done, you don't get discouraged by every difficulty. You don't fall apart because of a disappointment. Upset because people are talking about you. Know that God has brought you through in the past and He's going to bring you through in the future. Amen. About a year after I was started helping Jim as associate pastor of this church, back a few years ago, I got word that one of our members was going to leave the church. These are people that I went to church with for a long time. I was just starting out. I wouldn't write my messages down like I do today, trying to keep myself a little bit organized, staying on the point. But I was doing my best. And the last thing I wanted to do was lose people. When I first heard this, I thought, oh man, I can't believe this is happening. I got tempted to get down and discouraged. But then something, guys, something rose up in me. And I started thinking, I made it through the death of my father. I made it through one of my darkest hours. I can make it through them leaving. I thought, I made it through having back surgery. I made it through a three and a half year lawsuit on my business. I made it through critics and naysayers telling me I couldn't minister. I made it through my own thoughts telling me I wasn't qualified. If I can make it through that, then I could make it through them not being here. I heard God say deep down in here, Chris, it's okay. They might leave, but I'm not going to leave. And just like all those other times, you still will be standing strong. You may be in a difficult time right now. You need to stop and look back and remember what has God done for you. How he's made a way when you didn't see a way. Remember how he has opened doors that it should have never opened. Remember how he has put you at the right place at the right time. Promoted you. Healed you. Restored you. If he did it for you once, he can surely do it for you again. Your house is built upon the rock. You have this promise that no matter what comes your way, when the storm is over, when the trouble has passed, when the opposition has ceased, there's one thing you can be counting on. You will still be standing. Amen? Amen. 
You have the DNA of the Almighty God. The same power that raised Christ from the dead lives inside of you. Yeah. You may get knocked down, but you're not going to stay down. There's something in your DNA that says, get back up again. That's not where you belong. You are a child of the Most High God. There was a hurricane that hit Florida here a while back. I'm pretty sure you all heard that Florida gets a lot of hurricanes. Well, when I was down there, it said you might have heard it. But anyways, there were all kinds of these trees blown down. Big oak trees. They were four and five feet in diameter. But still was no match for that hurricane. With a hundred mile winds, blew them right down. Also pine trees that stood over a hundred feet tall all were laying down in the yards across the way. Big trees, small trees, pines, oaks, magnolias, elms. None of them could withstand that hurricane's force winds. There was only one type of tree that I noticed that wasn't blown down. It was the palm tree. It's because God designed the palm tree to withstand the storm. Unlike most other trees, the palm is able to bend. Have y'all ever seen them? They're able to bend over to where it's almost touching the ground. During a hurricane, it may stay that way for five or six hours. Looks like it's over. Looks like it's done. I can imagine, y'all get this, I can imagine this hurricane sitting there huffing and puffing, right? Going strong, saying, I may not be able to break you palm tree like the oaks and the pines, but at least I can keep you bent over. At least I can keep you from ever standing up again. The hurricane thinks it's winning the battle. But a few hours later, when it runs out of strength and the hurricane dies back down, you know what? The palm tree stands right back up. Amen. To where it was again. Why is that? Why is that? Because God put bounce back in that palm tree. That's right. It may get pushed over, but it's only temporary. Just a matter of time for it stands right back up. Y'all look at this. Psalm 92.12. Everybody, Psalm 92.12. But the godly will flourish like palm trees and grow strong like the cedars of Lebanon. Okay? Psalm 92.12. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. It could have said will flourish like, a, like an oak tree. It could have said, uh, be strong and, 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 and the wide branches. Or maybe it could have said, like a pine tree, be tall and impressive, be able to see for miles. But the reason God said we will flourish like a palm, it's because God knew we would face difficulties. He knew there would be storms in life to try to push us down, Amen. keep us from our destiny. So God said, I'm going to make you like a palm. I'm going to put bounce back on the inside. You may go through a season where the winds and the blowing, a season of loss or disappointment, a season of dealing with an illness, but don't get discouraged. It's only temporary. Amen. At some point, those winds will stop blowing. And the bounce back that was put into you by your Creator will cause you to straighten right back up to where you were before. Don't believe the lies that it's permanent. You won't get well. You'll never overcome this addiction. You'll never get out of that legal problem. No, your house is built upon the rock. You may be a little bent over right now, and it may seem, it may have some difficulties, but when that storm passes, be encouraged. You're going to straight stand right back up to where you were before. What's interesting, when the palm trees is bent over because of the hurricane, you would think that's damaging the tree and making it weaker, but research shows it's just the opposite. 
When the tree is being pushed and stretched by the strong winds, it's strengthening it, the root system, giving it opportunities for new growth. After the storm, when the palm tree stands right back up stronger than it was before, when you get through that storm, when you straighten back up, you're going to be the same. You're going to be stronger, healthier, wiser, better off, ready for new growth. God never brings you out the same. He makes the enemy pay for bringing that trouble. What's meant for your harm, God will use it for your advantage. That difficulty is not going to defeat you. It's going to promote you. It's not going to break you. It's going to strengthen you. You're not only going to still be standing, but you're going to be standing stronger than ever. I have a friend. It's, it's, I'm not talking about Jim here. I have another friend that's had, that's had uh, cancer three times. It's been going on the last 10 years. And a couple of times, it's even looked like he was done. Not for once have I seen him down or ever heard him complain. He knows God has him in the palm of his hands. He knows the numbers of his day that God would fulfill. And you want to know something else? He's got his house built upon the rock. Every time when it looks like he is done, something happens and he stands right back up like that palm tree. Amen. Last time the cancer came back, the doctors told him they were going to harvest his white blood cells before he took chemotherapy. He asked them how many they needed and the doctors gave him a number. He said, doctor, I'm going to give you twice what you're asking for. Every day he would thank God that he was getting better. He saw himself healthy, whole, went out and exercised, did everything that he could do for two months. Two, uh, two months later, he went back to the hospital. First thing the doctor said, he says, man, you're a man of your word. You're giving us exactly what we asked for, more than what we, we were looking for. Today, he is totally cancer-free. Hey. Beat the cancer for the third time. Here's what I'm saying. No matter how hard those winds blow, they cannot uproot you. They cannot topple you. They cannot break you. Sickness does not determine your destiny. God does. He's the one that breathed life into you. He made your body. If it's not your time to go, then you're not going to go. God has the final say, and he said no weapon formed against us will ever prosper. He said many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. He said a good man may fall seven times, but the Lord will raise him up. There's bounce back. Now you've got to get in agreement with God. Don't have a weak, defeated mentality. Oh, Chris... Why did this happen to me? I don't understand it. I can tell you why. Because you're alive. You're living. Right down here. And it rains on everyone. But the good news is, is because you are righteous, you have something in you that the unrighteous doesn't have. Like that palm tree, there is bounce back in your spirit. No matter how... How heavy those winds blow, they cannot defeat you. If you will stay in faith, you will be able to say, like, like my friend, I'm still standing. Had a problem at work, or at school, or with that family member, or my spouse, that's okay. I'm still standing, stronger than ever. Amen. Isaiah said, when the enemy comes in like a flood, you lost everything. And when you've lost everything in a storm... You got a bad medical report. A friend did you wrong in a business deal. What do you think God's doing? Do you think God's just sitting back going, I told you so. Told you that's the way it's going to be. 
It's going to rain. I told you it's going to rain. I told you it's going to be difficult. No. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God raises up a bearer in another words. That injustice, that bad break, that sickness, it gets God's attention. It gets His attention. He doesn't sit back. What's God do? He goes to work. It's like as a parent... If you see something bothering your child, something or someone is trying to hurt your child, you immediately stop what you're doing and you go to help. Amen. You go to help your child. My mother one time, oh yeah. <laughs> my mother one time was at the grocery store shopping with my brother Glenn. She'd been shopping there for a while. And she decided it's time to check out. Had a full full deal. She pulled up there, and you know, you know where the baby sit. The baby sit up in that little little thing up at the front of the basket, where they're right there. So my mother walked around, and here's the thing, and she starts pulling stuff out, pulling stuff out. Well, you know how babies are. They're they're inquisitive. They're looking around and that, that you know. <laughs> and so they gra- he grabs grabbing things. So Glenn happens to grab something. He gets it open. Mom is paying no attention. She's putting the groceries up on the right. And he gets it open and right. Mama puts the bread on and she's got eggs. You always wait till eggs go on the last it, right? So it'll be on top. So she got her eggs in her hand. About that time, Glenn bites into this little thing, and all she heard, you little thief. And she looked around, she goes, Do what? And this sacker come around and said, Whoa, wait, wait, wait a minute. Your little son, he's a thief. And mama goes, Right in the face, boom, with those eggs. <laughs> well, you, what do you do? You got eggs on me. You hit me with eggs. She said, you don't call my boy a thief. And I mean it. I got another carton of eggs right here. <laughs> so anyway, the manager comes. The manager comes. And he tells the manager, she hit me with it. And after the manager finds out, and she said, you better thank God she didn't grab the potatoes, because I'd have done that. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying here? My mother is the nicest person you will ever meet. She will do anything for you if she can. But if you mess with one of her children, you're going to have the biggest egg fight you've ever had in your life. Hey. <laughs> oh man no that's how our heavenly father is when the enemy comes in like a flood God steps in and says wait a minute you're messing with the wrong person that's my son that's my daughter if you're going to mess with them first you're going to have to mess with me you got to realize when you're in tough times, you're not alone. You always have somebody there with you. Amen? Amen. Helping you through your battles. The Most High God has, get, has got your back. Now you've got to get your fire back. You can't go through life worried about who hurt you. Why that happened? Why that didn't work out? That's going to keep you down. Like Paul, when the snake beat him on the hand, shake it off. Amen? Just shake that crap off. Don't think about it anymore, okay? Move forward. That weak, defeated mentality and have a warrior. And so have a warrior mentality. A warrior, y'all listen to this, a warrior doesn't complain about opposition. On the contrary... A warrior likes a good fight. It fires him up. This is what David did in the scripture. He suffered a major setback. He and his man were out protecting the borders of Israel, doing the right thing, fulfilling their purpose, and it began to rain. These bandits come in and attacked the whole city called Ziglag. Burned down their houses, stole all their positions, possessions, kidnapped their wives and children. When he and his gut, when he and his six hundred men had returned home and saw the smoke billowing in the distance, they finally realized that was their home city. 
The scripture says they wept till they could not weep no more. It was the worst day of their life. It looked like it was over. It looked like they were done. It looked like it was going to stay that way. If it had not been for David, he did something that we all must do. We all must understand this. We all must ingest this, and we all need to do this. If we, he did something that we all must do if we're going to see the bounce back. Instead of staying in the ashes there at Ziglag, focusing on how bad life had treated him, that warrior spirit began to rise up. He thought, I may be down. That may be my worst defeat so far, but, there is no, but this is not the end of my story. I am the righteous. I do have bounce back in my spirit. My house is built upon the rock. I have the promise. When it's all over, I will still be standing. What David do? He started encouraging himself. He started remembering God is there. He started encouraging his thoughts. He quit thinking about the problem. He quit thinking about what happened to him. He quit put it all down. It was pulling him down. Finally, he said, wait, wait, no. No, my God is bigger than this situation. God, I know you can handle this. And so he got to thinking on them thoughts. Reminding him who he was and who he was. And tell his men, he told his men, get up. Your tears, dry your tears. Get your equipment. We're going to go get what belongs to us. They went out, not only attacked and defeated the enemy, but they got all their possessions back. They got all their wives and children back. The scripture says they recovered all David's greatest Defeat turned into one of greatest, his greatest victories. Amen. We all face unfair situations. Things that don't seem like they're, that they're not going to get better. They're going to bury us. But if you will have this warrior mentality and go after what belongs to you, the enemy won't take the last laugh. He may hit you with his best shot, his best will never be enough. The forces that are for you are greater than the forces that are against you. Amen. Like David, you may be down right now. You may be facing something big right now in your life today. It may be something that's been on your mind for a long time. It may be something that you're struggling with. You don't know what to say. But because your house was built on the rock, guys... Because it's built in right, and because you are righteous, there is bounce back in your spirit. Amen. The scripture puts it this way God has armed you with strength for every battle. I found the more difficulties the battle, the more strength you will have. Amen. Your strength will always match what you're up against. Are you letting something defeat you because you think you don't have the strength to overcome? I can't deal with that financial problem. Chris, this sickness has got me down. Or that child that is off course. If you will have this warrior mentality and do what you can do, can do, God will help you to do what you can't do. Amen. Years ago, there was a car wreck in Chicago. That's where I was at. And it was a pretty bad car wreck. It was pretty messed up. But out of the corner of my eye, this little guy runs up. This little guy about the size of Mike Chandler back here in the back. Everybody want to turn around and look at Mike Chandler right now? There we go. Hey, Mike. All right. Thank you, Mike. I needed that. This little guy, this little guy runs up <clears throat> into it, and he grabs the door, and he pulls on it. And he ripped it open. And he dragged this person out. Later, I was watching the news, and they asked this guy, how in the world was you able to rip that mangled door open and pull that bigger person out? The guy says, I don't know. I just pulled as hard as I could. When you do what you got to do, then you will discover a strength you didn't know you had. Amen. Friends, friends, guys, people, 
Friends, you are not weak. You're not defeated. You are a warrior today. You've got resurrection power inside of you. You may be down right now, and those words may be, I'm sorry, and those winds may be blown, but like that palm tree, you're about to come back up again. You're not going to have to stay down. You're not going to be the same. You're going to be stronger, healthier, better off. This is a new day. Things are changing in your favor. God's done it in the past. He's going to do it again in the future. You need to get ready. A bounce back is coming. You're going to bounce back from sickness. You're going to bounce back from that loss. Bounce back from bad breaks. Bounce back from debt. Those winds cannot uproot you. They didn't have the final say in your life. God has the final say in your life. And because, guys, you have built your house upon the rock, no matter what comes against you, I believe and declare, and when it's all said and done, you will be the victor and not the victim. You will still be standing in Jesus' name. And if you receive this message today, can you say amen? Amen. Let's give God some praise. I hope that message touched you because I'm telling you, I, I wrote it. We, we got together with a few, few, few of my people, and I mean, we talked, and I mean, we just worked, and it was just it's a really good message. If anybody needs to come and talk to me about Jesus, come on down. But other than that, thank y'all. All right.